It has been two weeks since Boost Surfing's technical support said they would be sending me a video about how to open the remote because I was unable to pair it with the fin. Um, they thought maybe the battery was disconnected inside, so they said they were going to send me a video about how to open it. And then if it was defective, they'd send me a new one. And they haven't sent me the video yet. So I'm just going to check, make sure it hasn't magically fixed itself. Alright, so when I turn it on, the phone detects the fin. We have a spinning icon. And the fin is flashing blue. Alright, so it wants me to connect a remote. I want to connect a remote too. So I've already read all the text. Push connect, and I need to push the short boost side. So I pressed it. And this is what happened before. Apparently the remote is not being heard. I can try the other side and that doesn't do anything either. So the remote is still not connecting to the fin. Which means I need to open it. Um, it looks very simple to open because it sure looks like it's just some hex screws. And it is specifically a 1.5 millimeter hex set of screws. And I've seen people open the back of these online where they've had some water get in. Um, so people have said that you should check the tightness of these screws before you put it in salt water or water of any sort. So let's take these out, check the battery, see if the battery has good voltage and is connected, and see if that fixes our problem. If it doesn't, I will go back to Boost Surfing customer support and say, hey, I'm probably going to need a new remote. All right, and there is our remote. It's kind of interesting. They have this rubber seal that goes around it, and I would kind of expect the rubber seal to be a continuous line, but they have a gap here and there, although these two have continuous seals. So I'm not sure where the seal is made. Maybe it's made on the outside. It might be this outside line here where the actual seal is made and not those things on the inside where the screws are. Because it does look like maybe that's it. There is a, um, a ridge that goes around the plastic here. So it looks like you have to have the screws tight enough for that ridge to be fully into this rubber all the way around. Now, it does have a battery. The battery does appear to be mostly in place. The spring is offset just slightly, but I don't think the spring is making contact with the outside case of the battery. I could be wrong there. It could be that that spring has fallen onto the outside case of the battery. Um, let me get a voltmeter and check the voltage on this battery. I'm getting 2.8 volts DC and this is supposed to be a 12 volt battery I believe so that might explain why things are... yes it does say it's LR27A 12 volts so that would explain why the remote is not pairing is this battery is way too low so notice there's a connection at this end and a connection at that end, and unlike kind of your typical AA battery, the connection at this end looks to be disconnected from the case. Now that spring, when I found it, was kind of touching the case and this part here, so I don't know if that's going to matter, because if the case is electric is electrically isolated from both sides, it won't really matter if that spring touched it. So I don't know if this battery ran down in shipping and storage, or if it was shorted, and that's why it ran down. I'm going to check the voltage when it's not in its um, enclosure here. Yes, yeah, 2.8 volts, so the battery is definitely run down. I don't know why. I don't know if it was you know, stored for super long and ran down in storage, or if there was some type of short there. Um, I think I'm going to do a continuity check between some different parts of this battery. So the case it's hard to tell if I'm actually touching the case there or some type of plastic covering. 
Um, but just an initial check here does not make it look like the case has continuity with either end of the battery. So I'm just going to get a new battery, put a new battery in, and see if that fixes my issues. I don't know why that battery was bad. Now, unfortunately, I do not have on hand a battery of this exact same size. The closest I could come was this battery here, which is a 23A instead of a 27A, and it is a 12-volt alkaline battery. Um, this one is not brand new, and um, its voltage is only about 11 volts, I think. 11.17 volts, but that's better than 2 volts. Um, and it's the same length, it's just not the same diameter. So I'm going to put it in here and use it to test. I have the positive side on the plus side over here. Use it to test the remote. It won't fit in the case, and it barely fits in the holder, but it will be, allows me to figure out if I need to buy a new battery or if the remote is bad. So let's try pairing this guy here. Okay, restarted the app. We're going, it found the fin. We're going to try connecting the remote. Let's connect the remote. Oh, I saw a light flash. It noticed the remote. Now I can peer the other end. And we're back in business as soon as I get a good battery. All right, so the problem was the battery in the remote had gotten down to two volts. I'm not sure if it had gotten shorted out or if it's just calendar age or just a bad battery to begin with. I need to go find the right diameter battery so I can put it back in the case. Um, but that was the problem on my remote.